now. <clears throat> so obviously, guys, we, we, we're working with, with technology at the moment. And um, if you are experiencing any problems, please use the chat box uh, to, to let us know. Uh, if I'm if I'm talking, Ian's going to monitor the chat box. And likewise, if Ian's talking, I'll, I'll monitor. If you do lose connection, um, go back to your original email, come on to the, uh, the meeting link and uh, we'll readmit you in. Just to, to help us out as well tonight, guys, if you can keep your microphones off uh, so we can, uh, we can talk through the, the, the details of the, the evening and your cameras as well. We're gonna leave 15, 10 to 15 minutes to answer any questions. So if you already have any questions, then, um, then please, uh, start using the chat box and we'll monitor that through the, the next hour and hopefully spend the last 10, 15 minutes to answer any of those questions. We will have um, some coach developers on our session tonight as well. Uh, introducing myself, I'm Mark Dixon. I'm the area admin for Southeast Wales and I also organise the Foundation One courses for Southeast. We've also got Ian on the call. You're probably able to see Ian in, in, um, in your camera. Ian looks after the North. And um, I did hear Stephen Davis's uh, dulcet tones uh, earlier on, and he's the uh, area admin for the West and course organizer for the West. And he might show his face at some stage if, uh, if he's around. First of all, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We will not keep you longer than 7.30 tonight. Um, and hopefully, you know, we might be able to wrap up a little bit earlier so you've got some more time in your evening. So we really do appreciate you spare, sparing some time to join us tonight. Um, obviously the Foundation One course is your start of your coach, coaching journey. And, you know, we're here to help you. And we want to, uh, to give you the best experience and all of the training that you need to get started on your coaching journey, uh, to develop confidence and so you can apply your skills out in the coach setting. Now we do, sorry, we do have quite a lot of uh, items to, to go through, but they're, they're only sh short sections. Uh, with regards to housekeeping, if, uh, if same again, just put any questions in the chat box there and we'll, we'll come back to you. Uh, in the next hour, uh, we're gonna talk about our current situation uh, and share with you a, a screenshot from the Cricket Wales website with regards to uh, our current status on, on our courses. And we're also gonna give you a, a, an honest uh, feedback with regards to our ongoing plans to try to, to get everybody trained up this season. Uh, I'm gonna hand over then to Ian, who's gonna go onto the internet and he's gonna show us e-learning, which which is uh, the, the online module system that hopefully you've all been into and, and registered and started looking at your modules. And uh, he's gonna show you iCoach Cricket, which is the invaluable resources for you to do the foundation one and then for you to use ongoing when you're out there coaching in, in, uh, in your clubs. We'll also show the, uh, the, the schematic of our face-to-face -face modules and Ian will also go through the timelines of what you will expect on the two days that you'll uh, attend the courses. COVID is, is, is with us and <clears throat> there, are, there are some lights at the end of the tunnel with regards to uh, being able to deliver, but we'll go through some things that we have done at Cricket Wales to, to help deliver the indoor sessions when, when it's safe to do so. And then we'll just come back full circle and go through the compliance qualifications, all of the items that you need to have in place to get your qualification and uh, be, be qualified as a Foundation One coach. So hopefully there'll be lots of questions. I'm sure there, 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 there will be. Um, if we don't have any, many questions in the chat box, we'll open it up and you guys can come forward, put your mics back on and, um, and uh, ask us the questions face to face. We do have coach developers on the course uh, session tonight from around the region. And um, 
if there's any technical questions that uh, we feel that we can't answer, we'll ask them to come forward uh, and offer their advice as well. So without further ado, guys, um, the, the COVID situation at the moment, um, this is a, a screenshot from the courses that we've got on our Cricket Wales website. We've broken them down into the east, west and north. Um, you can see, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor here. Uh, you can see that our early January course and February course have already been cancelled in the east. And um, unfortunately, the, the, the first one in March has as well. We have offered new dates for the first two courses. And um, we'll talk about uh, any cancelled courses from, from March onwards in a second. Uh, obviously, with regards to government guidelines, um, you know, in England, there's, there seems to be a bit more of a clear roadmap. But uh, our ability to, to deliver these sessions is completely guided by the First Minister's uh, release of his statements on, on a three weekly basis. Now, this does potentially put into jeopardy our remaining March courses. And um, we really do hope that it's not going to be an issue for our April courses. Going into the West as well, we've already had three courses that um, uh, re require rescheduling. And uh, the first two planned RC courses have been moved out to normal, nominal dates. And uh, Steve will be communicating with any candidates that are registered on that, those courses individually. And um, those, those dates are in at the moment, but as, as I say, there's a potential that those could change as well. And Ian up in, nor up in the north, unfortunately, you know, he booked in January and early February courses, and he's going to, going to be working with his venues to uh, provide dates ongoing, hopefully in April, maybe going into the season. Now, as you know, it's, it's completely out of our control with regards to delivering these courses, and we really want to deliver them as soon as it's safe to do so. With regards to COVID, safety of every person in Wales is, is paramount. And unfortunately, <clears throat> you know, even these courses have to take second, uh, second place to the safety of uh, people. Hopefully we will be able to run our April courses and possibly our March courses, but myself, Mark, Dixon in the East will be delivering any communications to our candidates on those courses. Same again with Steve down West, he'll communicate to any candidate that's on those courses with any changes and Ian up in the North as well. Now we're always in discussion as, as uh, course organizers on a weekly basis. And as things change, we are looking at opportunities to deliver the courses into uh, hopefully before the start of the season. But it's very much looking like that we might need to think outside the box and deliver courses inside the season, whether or not those are going to be Sunday courses or whether or not we can host them at clubs outdoors on evenings where we could break down the course into its, into its modules. Now, please bear with us as we, we discuss those options and those opportunities to deliver our final option after that is if if there's not enough candidates that can move to those dates then we 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 will have to move into september and october and and november to deliver the courses so there's always three factors in 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 uh, in play here if we do move dates then will all the candidates be available for the new dates Will a venue be available? And similarly, our coach developers that are on the session tonight, it's their availability as well. Now, there's, there's, unlike, there's, there's only myself and Ian who are full-time Cricket Wales staff, and uh, all of our other great coach developers have got other jobs. They work in clubs, they work for regions, and some of them work internationally as well. So finding the resources available to deliver those courses as well is, is paramount to, to each of those three factors. Uh, in a normal year, you know, we would have 
gone through each of these courses and delivered them in front of the season. So please bear with us, but we will communicate with you. So if I go on to the next screen, um, we're going to go into e-learning. Actually, I might come back a session. A sec, no. We're going to go into e-learning, and I'm going to be passing over to Ian shortly. Um, but first, for you guys who haven't been into e-learning, this, this is the, the login screen here. Um, and if you have any problems signing in, you should have received emails from the ECB when you signed up to the course to, uh, to access your e-learning. And if you do have problems logging in, this is the email address here that you can use to, uh, to get your access rectified. But similarly, come, come to myself, come to Ian, and also Steve, who can help you get access and, and help you out with that. And we will also be looking at iCoach Cricket, which is the online video portal and uh, resource portal for you to use as a coach. So I'm going to just stop sharing now, guys, and I'm going to pass over to Ian, who will go through a little bit of a, a ready reckon on the online systems. Ian, over to you. Have you got access here? No, your microphone's off. All right. Apologies. There you go. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for that, Mark. Um, just noticed we've got more people on the call today than England scored runs, which <laughs> great. great, great from a from a turnout from from uh, from Wales' point of view. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, bear with me one moment. Here we go. So. We are landing on our e-learning website. Just before I take you through these two websites, there will be a whistle-stop tour of them. You don't want to listen to me rattling on for too long about these. Um, I just want to stress two points. Firstly, sometimes people can get confused with what functionality each, each site produces. Um, the, the simplest way to term it is that for e-learning, this is for you during the course or any future courses, the SYC, um, anything like that, that to do with coach education courses. This is the, this is the site that you can use for, for that. Um, I coach. That's more of a lifelong tool, where it's, it's it's a resource that you can start using now and even as a coach. I'll go on to I coach in a moment, but even as a coach before you've passed any badges, if, you, if you're helping out, you can use it with all stars. But going forward, I'm sure there's some experienced coaches on the call today, I'm sure they still use, use iCoach and still will, will continue to use it. So that's the differences of the two. So if I go in and log in now, Mark's given you the email addresses to, to contact if there's any problems. Okay, so let me just move that. So you go to active learning where you should see this. I'm sure you will. And then this is the module by module guide, which we will take you through in a moment. Modules one to four are online. Module five, six is face to face. Seven, eight, nine between modules six and ten, they're to be done online. Along with the multiple choice questions, which I'll explain in a moment, and then finishing off with modules 10, 11. And we'd love to, at the end of day two, to, uh, to be able to sign you off. We're only able to do that if you've got all your compliancy bits in place and you've done your online modules. So if I take this down a little bit. So, someone not on mute. <laughs> not, not Great, thank you. So, the biggest trick to look out for here for, for the online modules and anything that you need to do will be a treasure box, as you can see here from the mouse, 
And once that's been complete and it's all fine, no problem, there'll be a blue tick that appears. Okay, so just going a little further down. More information about the ECB Coaches Association. Click that link, it'll take you through to that. This is a really useful tool here. If you haven't found this as yet, log on here onto eLearning. Go to your program resources and information. I'll just click it. And you can download these chunky documents and that will help you, you know, realise what the course is, the things that you need to look out for, and it'll help you, your building, bowling, batting foundations, the coaching tools, and just have a read up of, of these before you come to, uh, to day one. That'll be really helpful for you. So I'll just nip back. Okie dokie. So we've got modules two, three, and four, of which I've completed those. So I've got blue ticks. I'll take you through. There's modules five and six, which will be face to face, as we say. Module seven, eight, nine. So I haven't done nine, batting, batting, uh, coaching batting. So there's no blue tick. And then before day two, you do need to do seven, eight, nine, and then also the multiple choice question. And you can do that there. Simply click the link, it'll take you. You get three attempts. Okay. Other thing I'd like to show you on here, I'll say it'll be as quickly as possible. If we go to courses, just to access your SYC, Safeguarding Young Cricketers online course, and that is under safeguarding and you'll be able to find that there. It won't let me take it because thankfully mine's in date. I haven't done it so uh, too long ago and there'll be a blue tick there. But if, if, I, if, you, if I hadn't have completed it, there'll be no blue tick. Simply tick the treasury box and away to go. Okay. So any questions about e-learning, if you can pop in the chat and we can pick that up later on. Okay, I'll take you to iCoach now. I've already pre-logged in. Um, the, right, iCoach, there's three levels of access to iCoach. I'll, I'll go through this briefly. That here, that's a coaches. You've got basic before, so before the coaches, so non-qualified people who are wanting to access this, whether it be all-stars activators or just generally throughout the world, people wanting to, to access iCoach. Um, I have access to all the All-Stars activities, but there's limited practices that they can view and there's no planning access, which obviously as coaches, be able to, to come on here, make your own plans, have a look at all the practices. That's a, a really useful tool. Then there's the coaches, which is a lot of the site. And then there is another level ECB coaches, which I have got. I'm just like logged in on the coaches so you can see your level of access should be coaches. When you log in, if it doesn't say that there, you need to chase that up because the things that we're going to ask you to do, the practices we're going to ask you to replicate within the face to face days, you're going to be able to, to use this tool and have a look, help you. If you haven't got that access, you could be, could be stuck there. Okay. So first place I want to take you to is the dashboard here. And the best part of the dashboard, I think would probably be the search function. So if I search, say, bat taps, which is a practice, it's going to come up with two, two tabs there. Here's your practices, and we'll tick that in a minute. COVID-19 bat taps, that's because of this practice. There's been a, uh, a COVID-19 one replicated. Click that and it will give you a PDF and show you how to run bat taps in a COVID safe environment. But we'll just tap that one. We've got three videos of bat taps. Um, a game card, which will just download a PDF, give you lots of information, how much, you know, what equipment you need, what the aim is, the organization. Really useful tool, just delete that one. 
you can add to your plan from here. You go into the planning to make your plan originally, and then you, you add whatever practices you, you want to put that in. So if you're running a session, nice and handy from here. Okay, okay. Um, where do I need to show you now? Right, so practices. Let's go to practices. We'll have a quick look on here. Again, we've got the search function. So you could you could search more generally. If we search batting, it will come up with everything related to batting. OK, different stages, early, basic and enhanced. These four filters here, let's go for a basic batting. Let's say we want it tactical. Well, nothing there. <laughs> Sorry, let me clear that. There you go. Batting zones. Cricket specific and then obviously the type of practice. OK. OK, so if we just go back to the dashboard, so if you want any any more information on the ECB, ECBCA, as soon as you, you pass the course, you can uh, you're eligible, eligible to apply for this. And two moments, OK, another interesting one would be a news feed. And is it relevant interest recently will be put up on that. And from here, you can visit e-learning. I'm already logged in. So that is just say a whistle stop tour of iCoach and e-learning. We're just going to talk about what to expect on face-to-face -face modules. Can I just uh, touch back uh, <clears throat> on the e-learning? There was a question out there with regards to somebody uh, who didn't have access uh, or didn't get the email. Uh, you can do that yourself by emailing elearning at ecb.co.uk. That will create a ticket in the ECB system and they'll look for your record and send you out your invite again. Same thing again, you can contact myself, Ian or Steve and we can help you out as well. So I'll just uh, continue on to the next screen. So the face-to-face -face modules, Ian. Yeah, face-to-face -face modules. Bear with me one minute. Shall I, get my, shall I share my screen again? Don't need to do that. Have you got the uh, modules up? Great. OK, yeah. So it's a very active session. Um, run over, normally run over two days. We may have to run a couple over evenings. We'll have to have probably over four evenings. Um, so wear appropriate footwear and clothing and uh, come prepared to get roll your sleeves up and get involved. Um, module five would be typically on the morning of day one. And you can see the things that we'll be running through on, on day one. Day one in the afternoon, we'll, we'll go through module six and so on. Day two, morning, module 10, afternoon, module 11. You'll have five opportunities to deliver your own practice and say these will be communicated to you prior to the day. And these are called your turns. So okay, in the south, southeast, Mark will send out to his courses, Steve in the west and myself in the north. We'll let you know what practices you're to run. Um, the, say there's five in total. The last three of those is where you're going to get assessed on. If you go onto the resources, you can see exactly what the assessment sheet is and what we'll be looking for, just to give you a bit of, a, bit of an idea of um, how we want the sessions to be run. And um, two moments. Yeah, we're just looking for, I say, an active day, hopefully a lot of fun, a lot of learning. And we say we want to be in a position at the end of that day, second day, to sign you off. We're only able to do that if you've got relevant DBS, SYC, and you've done all your modules online. And yeah, anything more to add on the face to face days from any tutors out there? Mark? No, I think uh, the most important thing is that, uh, you know, we will touch on it in a, in a second uh, with regards to delivering this safely for you 
based on COVID. Um, but uh, most importantly, guys, this is uh, the the introductory step. So it's it's not it's not too onerous, but there will be requirement for you guys to engage with the e-learning, making sure all of the safeguarding elements are, are ticked. But most importantly, there's going to be lots of opportunities to try. And uh, you, you know we're here to help you and give you any advice and guide you through the process to, to get your qualification. So Ian, I, do you think uh, is that is that uh, you done on the the, the the foundation one? Yeah, yeah. Probably just to just to you know, reiterate what we what we both said on the call, and that you know can't emphasize enough get onto these websites as soon as you can, if you haven't done already and, and have a play around, a bit like passing your driving test. As soon as, soon as you pass the course, you'll then go out and, and really get stuck into coaching. And that's hopefully where you, you know, you, the use of iCoach Cricket is. I, I use it all the time. It's a fantastic tool. And I think we're very lucky in the sport to have, have free access to, to a facility like that, which is great. In the meantime, have a look on, on, on e-learning. There's lots of information about the course. And if, if you can't find anything, give, give the area admins a drop, drop us an email or a call. I'm sure we'll point you in the right direction. But no, just, just enjoy it and try and get as much out of the course as, as you possibly can, really. Excellent, Ian. Thank you very much. Um, so we do have the elephant in the room. You know, at this moment in time, delivery of any online sessions. Uh, so online sessions are fine, but uh, delivery face-to-face -face indoors is just a no-go area at the moment. But the area team have been working in the background all the way through the winter, and we've compiled an extensive risk assessment for when we are allowed to come out uh, and deliver the sessions. Uh, and that's with your safety in mind and also the safety of the coach developers as well. Uh, Ian's created a health questionnaire, which will be sent out to every candidate when we do have confirmation that we can deliver. So you will get that uh, delivered to your inbox on the week before. So we would need that completed. And that's basically an opt-in to, to tell us that you know, you are happy, you don't have any symptoms, because obviously we won't require you to come and join the course if, you know, you are feeling ill and uh, putting other people in at risk as well. Um, with regards to, to finding spots onto uh, additional courses, if you can't, if you can't attend because of that, that's something that we will need to work on an individual basis. So that, que that health questionnaire would come out um, the week before the course, um, alongside your activities that you need to deliver on day one. PPE, um, we would like for you guys to bring your own face masks, face coverings, <clears throat> and any sanitization products as well. The, the coach development team will have a stock of those items, just in case you've forgotten them. Uh, and uh, we will need to make sure that, uh, you know, we have adequate sanitization breaks between activities because there are set breaks between each of the um, parts of the module that will allow us to 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 break down and uh, and clean clean the items so we will need your support with that um, there are natural breaks after the your turns um, where we with our equipment we will only have designated coach education equipment no ancillary items so everybody would be allocated a bat. We'd be able to put bat numbers on there and that, that's your bat for the day, your job to clean down. Um, similarly with the balls, there, there might be a transfer of balls around different individuals, but uh, as long as we are able to clean down on regular intervals, then it will hopefully keep you safe. So um, the procedures will be based on um, the information that the coach developers will provide to you at the start of each day uh, and it's really a case of keeping you guys safe and, uh, and, the, and the developers safe as well. Now that's if we're delivering indoors. Um, we haven't uh, taken a, off the table delivering outdoors in the summer 
and there, there will be different regulations and we might have a little bit more flexibility with, uh, with, with regards to the COVID expectations when we're outside. So compliance qualifications, now it sounds quite a long word, but all it means is what do we need to have in place for you guys and what do you need to do to make sure we can give you your qualification? During the two days, you would have three marked observed your turns. So essentially you'd have something on fielding, uh, batting and bowling. So we would be providing you feedback after each of the, each event. And you need to have competence in two of the three um, activities uh, across the board. Um, <clears throat> during that, you will have opportunities to practice beforehand. So, you know, we will be giving you feedback to, to try to get you to, to, the, uh, to the standard that you, you need to achieve in those three marked observations. Completing all of the online e-learning modules and also attending both face-to-face -face modules. Now, I know there's potentially going to be a question coming out maybe in the chat that, you know, can we move a lot more of this online? Well, 70% of it is already online with your e-learning, SYC, DBS, um, multiple choice. But it's really, really important that the coach developers work with you to help you and give you confidence to deliver activities in front of other people. Uh, so I touched on the multiple choice questions as well. You need to get 70% uh, uh, pass rate on your multiple choice. Don't try to do your multiple choice in front of day one. It's supposed to be done between day one and day two because the information that you get from the coach developers on day one will help you answer those questions. Now, if you fail um, or if you don't get to the pass mark, you do have three opportunities to pass. Try not to write down the answers because the questions do rotate. So it's not that easy to, 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 to sort of just say that uh, I'm just gonna answer A, B, C on the, on the question. So just make sure that you uh, don't try to do the multiple choice until you've done day one. Um, also, uh, you need to be 70 year, 17 years of age. We've probably got a couple of young guys uh, and girls uh, on the session tonight. <clears throat> Even though you will get your qualification, you don't. You are not certified until your 18th birthday, and then the system will issue out your certificate. So, if you're 17 and you are competent on this course, it means that you can't deliver on your own yet. You have to wait till your 18th birthday. Uh, and the valid safeguard in training, the online SYC, which is linked into your e-learning account. Um, and there's probably going to be quite a few of you guys that uh, haven't got an ECB uh, DBS at the moment. So same thing. This is something you can do well in advance of coming onto the course. It's really good practice. If you don't have a DBS, then contact myself, Ian or Steve and we can start that process for you. So, you know, we don't want you not being able to get your qualification for these things that are easy to set up in advance. So um, we're, we will monitor and we'll look to see if you've got a DBS, but if you know you haven't got one, then come forward and, and let us know. And finally, obviously the course needs to be paid for. Um, we've allowed the courses to be booked uh, with payment offline. And that means we would invoice yourself or to your club to make sure that uh, that uh, payment of £150 is, is taken in, in advance of giving out your qualification. So um, we've been quite flexible this year. I know Steve Down West has made a point of not taking any payments at all because there's a chance that, that courses could move and it just creates an administration nightmare. So those are the those are the uh, compliance requirements for qualification, and um, what I'm going to do now is somebody scribbled all over my next page. I don't know who that was. <laughs> well, there we go. It's gone again. I'm not sure who was doing that. So this is your opportunity, guys. Um, we're going to have a little look at the um, 
the questions. Uh, Ian, have you got anything that's come out that you've seen so far? So far? Uh, not really in the chat. No, most of them have been been answered. I think. If, yeah, I, th if it, if it, I think Steve's been really active. Um, and yeah, you know, thanks, for that, Steve. So if anyone wants to take themselves off mute, off mute and, and, and ask anything, or if you've missed anything in the chat, feel free. Yeah, we've got 20 minutes left, guys. And, um, you know, if, if you're happy to have a little bit of a discussion and, and come forward and ask some questions, we've got until half past seven. Um, but if, uh, if, if we do run out of questions, we can finish early for you. I'm just going to have a look at the questions. So if anybody would like to come forward. We, we've got Matt Spillitz who's raised the, raised the hand. Do you want to take yourself off mute, Matt? I'm off mute, mate. Thank you very much for that. It was really useful. Um, I'm shielding. Um, uh, I've had a nice letter from that Vaughan getting. Uh, it says that I'm shielding till the 30th of March. I've had my first jab, second one sometime in April. Um, any advice? Uh, I think if you if you shield him, Matt, which course are you booked on? Is in uh, I was I was on the um, Plan Darcy course. Plan Darcy, yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm, I can't remember the date. I was on the Plan Darcy, but um, they <clears throat> both gone, so I'm not on one at the moment. Okay, Matt, it's Steve. Um, hey, Steve. As I've said previously, the dates, the rearranged dates are all provisional at the moment. They haven't been confirmed. Um, I can't see these being confirmed for a few weeks. So, um, you know, we can review your situation at that time or whether it's good for you to come along or not, as the case may be. So just keep in touch with me as we have been in the past. Will do, thanks. Thanks, Matt. Um, I've got a question here from uh, from Neil Neil Parrott. If we have a large group, can we hold the training at our club? We have circa six. Um, I know you're from my area, Neil, but I can't remember which club you're from. So please excuse, excuse me on that. He's, he sent me a direct uh, message on that. Um, we have talked about uh, delivering smaller sessions to, to clubs and delivering at clubs. Um, as you know, health and safety it always comes into play and having just one tutor looking at the six candidates um, is unlikely to happen unless we've got an assistant uh, uh, coach developer or somebody of a suitable standard to, to, uh, to help us uh, deliver the course. So I, you know, even, even if we've only delivered into six, we might need to deliver over four evenings we might need to deliver over two full days. So the course still would need to be run as per regulation, but it really depends on resources. But it's something that we will look at. Um, whether or not six is something that uh, would be a bit too small, we would probably prefer to run with, with at least 12 outdoors and have two coach developers with us. But it's not out of the question. There's three factors, obviously, as I said, it's weather, there's location availability and there's resources availability from the from the tutors that we have available to us as well. Uh, I'll just check on some other questions. If anybody wants to get else come forward, I just had one in the in the chat from uh, is it Michael John Roberts? Um, yeah, yeah the, it's been recorded. This has been recorded. and It'll be on our on our website tomorrow. But yeah, any detail of the online courses? If you go into e-learning. Shown you, shown you before, go into active courses, you, your online modules are there, seven online modules, four to do before day one. Feel free to have a look at the others. Um, uh, I've got a comment from Paul, I'm not sure if that's, that's our Paul. Um, should have found Mark O'Leary's practices made in Wales, exclamation, exclamation mark. So uh, there's a little bit of kudos there for you, Mark. Obviously his videos during lockdown have been amazing and uh, really helpful for, for activity. So if you can follow Mark O'Leary on Twitter, you can access some of these wonderful out of the box training activities that you can do around the house. Uh, Mark, do you want to come forward a second and just give a, give these guys um, uh, a sort of a bit of confidence with regards to how they can innov innovate uh, their, 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 their training ideas? 
Yeah, of course. Um, no problem at all. Just, just firstly, if, if you do get a chance to do your, your coaching um, with your courses or at your clubs, I, I'm very lucky that I'm, I'm coaching full time at the moment. And I will say that the coaching has been pretty daunting to start with. And when I say daunting, the health and safety, um, wearing gloves for uh, different players, different balls, it's, it's, it's a nightmare, but you will get used to it. So stick with it on that. At first, you'll think, what is going on here? But stick with it. Um, yeah, secondly, just try as many things as possible in the garden, in the house. Um, I think there'll be a lot of cricketers come through um, for through this COVID, the argument could be that we're going to lose cricketers, but I think there's, it could be an exciting time ahead because there is, as you probably see on social media, uh, a lot of youngsters who are getting their practice in, practices in at home. So, yeah, just promote that at your clubs with your kids, online stuff, um, whatever you can do, really. Excellent. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mark. Um, there are a few more questions here. Um, uh, do we know how long the DBS is valid for? Uh, the DBS is uh, is valid for in uh, for hours, however long that uh, it, it is in uh, act, uh, active for. There's there's a new update service. So when you when you first apply for a DBS, make sure you tick the box uh, for the update service, which means that on a yearly basis it just it just rolls on and rolls on as long as your information doesn't doesn't change. So whereas it used to be every three years you had to do one, you do this one now. And as long as your details don't change, you you just can, you don't do anything and it will roll on and roll on. So um, that's positive news with the DBS. It also has to be a cricket specific one, unfortunately. So it would have to be raised by ourselves as area admins. We would then get an ECB specific DBS for you. Um, there's a bit of a long question here. For those who are taking over the youth section uh, of their respective clubs this season, but don't, do not have the foundation level qualification when the season starts, are they still able? Are they still able to do a delay? Are they still able due to a delay in the course dates as long as they're ECB DCB uh, DBS checked? Our courses were were due next weekend. It hasn't been arranged as of yet. Um, I think the gist of that question is that can I still coach if I don't have the coaching qualification? And the short answer to that is unfortunately no. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else in the team has seen the question from Stephen Ignell Tomes. Yeah, I, I did put a reply in there. Um, I think it's a conversation probably to be had locally. And, and involving Yayan, our, our lead safeguarding officer for uh, for Cricket Wales. Um, I think... I, I, for, Ian, sorry, Steve. Ian, I, th I think we, we kind of need to be pragmatic about this. And as long as there are well-intentioned and well-formed uh, ideas of how we take individuals forward, but, but, but then they are subject to delay, then we need to understand that because we don't really want it to be a knock on a detrimental effect to the club. So on in instances like that, I think we need that flagged up to us so we can talk uh, to the local uh, area manager in Cricket Wales and also to Yayan, our director of safeguarding, to make sure that we're not uh, leaving ourselves open or, or, the, or the individual isn't leaving themselves open. But as a minimum, yes, a DBS would be essential. Um, and I think we just need to develop a pragmatic way forward on the subject. Uh, I don't want to drop Mark Frost in it, but I, uh, Mark, I don't know, have you got a view on this? He's on mute. Okay, so um, what Steve, I would- Can I just add something just a sec? Um, yeah. If there's a qualified coach at the club and, they, and the other person has got their DBS, they could actually coach under that person on that evening. But not on their own. Yeah, not on their own, but they could coach with someone else. So if there's a qualified coach there at the club, they could work within that system. So yeah, it's a way forward, isn't it? Yeah, thanks, Paul. But, but what I would suggest, if anybody's concerned about that, speak to your local area admin so we understand what the situation is and we try and formulate a pragmatic way forward. 
um, that that is cognizant of the delays that we've had due to COVID. Okay. Yeah. Th thank you, Steve. No one wants to see any activity stopping, do we? But obviously, we, we want as many coaches out there as possible. But as you say, we, we want to take a pro pragmatic view with this. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Anything else? Okay, I've got a, an email a message from Andrew Walker. Um, Mark, our new coaches at Cowbridge on level one for DBS, should they email you directly, of course, through the club? Um, that's a good uh, good point then, Andrew. Um, currently, with regards to the COVID restrictions, only a, only a select number of people are allowed to start DBSs. Um, when it does open up, any club welfare officer is allowed to start a DBS can do so, but but if you need any DBSs starting, myself, Ian, Steve, um, and if you know of uh, Yayan Watkins or your club, uh, your, your league welfare officer, they will be able to start your DBS as well. Okay, guys, um, uh, I think I'll just share my screen one more time just to provide the uh, our contact information. So, if you need to contact any of uh, any of us, uh, and you know, if, even if you're not in that particular area, we can get our message back across to uh, to each other. We meet on a on a weekly basis, and we try to keep a Wales wide uh, control and and similar method of working to make sure that it's consistent across the whole of Wales. So. Those are our email addresses if, if you want to take a note of those now. Um, but um, I will also be sending out a, um, uh, the recording of this tomorrow so you can come back into it and catch up with anything that you might have missed. Uh, so last couple of minutes, guys, if there's any other questions, please come forward. Uh, otherwise, we will call it uh, to an end for you tonight. Oh, there was a question. I've, I've, there's a group of guys that um, were with myself, uh, Ali Waldron and Mike Knight, that we did one day March last year. We tried to try to reschedule for early January this year. Um, we are rescheduled now for April the 10th, fingers crossed. So anybody that's done the day one, we will uh, we will try to get that finished for you on April the tenth in Newport. Um, if you've got any questions directly on that, please come through to me. But uh, we we are trying to get you through the course. Mark, um, is it Faisal's just asking? I think he's in that situation where uh, been a big big delay from day one to day two. He's asking as a refresher. Uh, in answer to your, to your question, Faisal, yeah, there is. A, there is a refresher. I think we, we plan to run something online before before day two. Is that right, Mark? Yeah, and uh, you can also go pop back into your e-learning modules and redo them. Um, so even though they've got a tick box, you can go back into your e-learning modules, re remind yourself. And same thing, you know, if you want to pick up the phone to us, guys, we can just talk you through what you did on day one, just to remind you of uh, where, where, how far you got. Just replying to Gemma now, um, but yeah, there are plans to to run activated training probably late April, we think, Mark, and um, yeah, it's yeah. going to be 60-70% online and, and the rest face-to-face -face if we can. Yeah, you know, myself and Ian will be uh, working on the programme for that. Um, there's two versions of the refresher, so anybody that is an existing activator there's going to be online modules on Club Spark launched early March. Uh, and then we'll do, uh, similar to this, we'll do uh, a refresher online. So you don't need to come to face-to-face -to -face again. Any brand new activators for the All-Stars or Dynamos. And if you really do feel that like you want to have a face-to-face, -face, you can sign up to the new activator refresher. The new activators will have an induction online. Uh, but then they will have an opportunity to face to face as close to back end of April, early May. Um, and uh, we'll be contacting some clubs across the areas 
to see if we can work with them to host those as well. Right. Okay. Um, any other questions? Fantastic. Did you get everything you needed from me, guys? If you didn't, you know where to come. Myself, Steve, and Ian. Um, but uh, as I say, we are still waiting for Mr. Drakeford's communications with regards to our other March courses. Um, and um, we'll be contacting everybody on those courses if there's any changes. So without further ado, guys, um, I think we'll, uh, we'll leave that tonight. Thank you very much for your time. Um, have a great evening and uh, hopefully see you soon in the flesh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you, Ian. Nice. Thanks, well, guys. Cheers. Cheers, bye. Thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thanks. Myself and Ian will stay on for a couple more minutes if uh, anybody wants to talk direct to us. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Mark. Cheers, thanks. thanks. Thanks, thanks, guys. That was a very